G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a really quick little tutorial for you that talks about how to set up a room number legend in Revit. Um, quite a simple little trick, but some people might not know it. So this actually comes from a user request um, from a channel called 630 Design. I'm not quite sure where you're from, um, but wherever you're from, thanks for the request. And they sort of presented this to me and said, I want to do something a little bit like this. So I have a floor plan and instead of tagging the rooms with names, I want to show a number but that number needs to represent an actual room. So in this case, we're gonna use the room's data to represent this. And we're gonna be using a schedule to represent this instead of a typical Revit legend. I have seen people use legends in the past to do this with manual text, um, obviously not a good option. So in this case, I'm just gonna be using uh, a number or a room tag, and then manipulating some room data and filtering it in a schedule and then placing it on a sheet just to achieve this outcome. And I've used this in a lot of uh, smaller scale projects in Revit, um, especially when you run out of room for a full room tag on a floor plan. I'm just gonna be using a sample project that I use for some of my demonstrations. Um, unfortunately, I don't release this model. Um, it's just for demonstration, but it's just a small two-story house. Um, so let's just jump in. Um, so I'm gonna jump straight into Revit. So I'm just in a typical sort of housing project, which has got a very basic sort of floor plan. And currently all the rooms are tagged um, with a name and a finish, but we're gonna build a different room tag. So I'm just actually just gonna make a, hmm, I could, I could take the original room tag actually and probably just manipulate that. So I might just edit this room tag and then just resave it as a different tag. So I'm gonna save my tag family and I'll just, I'll just call this a tag and I'll call this um, tag room number. And we're just gonna get rid of everything except for one field. And in this case, I might just get rid of all these little tick boxes that I've got in my tag that control all the visibility of all the various um, pieces of the room tag. And I find this is better if your tag is really just intended to do one thing. I'm just gonna call this typical because it's only got really one function. And we're just gonna edit the label in the tag. And you could create a new label from create label. Uh, but in my case, I'm just gonna edit one I've already placed. And we're just gonna be calling on the room's number field in this case. And I'll just put in a sample value of uh, maybe eight. And you may wish to also put like a little circle around it as well, um, possibly. So in this case, I might just turn on the crosshair of the family. So I can just center this number in this case. You can also change the size of the text and how that, uh, that, that particular tag looks. In my case, I might de-bolden the tag because bold's probably a little bit too, a little bit too strong in this case. You may also wish to just tick on this wrap between parameters only uh, option, which means that if your text overflows outside your label, it won't spill into a new line. Uh, but from there, I'm just gonna put a little circle around my tag. Now I'm gonna use a masking region so that it sits on top of any model elements underneath it. Um, I'll just use the room tags object style and I'm just gonna make it maybe two millimeters in radius. And just to make a good thumbnail preview, I'm just gonna turn off reference lines and planes. And now we have a, a little room number tag. So I'm just gonna save this, load this into my project, and we can now place these tags. Now at the moment, there's no field here, obviously, because I don't have a room number. So obviously you would need to actually add room numbers um, to the rooms themselves, and then that tag will sort of expose that, that value. So let's just, um, let's just swap a few of these over. We won't do all of them. Maybe we'll just do the really small rooms or the more insignificant spaces in the project. So I'll do these ones here. Because I find usually this is a better approach. You may not wish for all rooms to have this type of tag. Maybe just um, some of the particular rooms. And you can really just hunt down the circles without a number in them um, and then put them in more ideal locations. And I find this is, this is more typical than every single room being represented by a number. Um, just because if you can fit some more information on your plan, um, all the better. I'll just put a number on my stairs. Now keep in mind, if you do have multiple stories of rooms, this might, this might present some challenges for you as well. In this case, my project is two story. Um, you may wish for your number legend to start at one in both cases. Um, in this case, you will end up with warnings because you're gonna end up with 
duplicate numbers, which is a problem in Revit. So you may wish to use a shared parameter instead of number. Uh, but in this case, I am just going to be using um, this and sort of wearing the errors. Because in, in most small scale projects, you don't really have as many problems if you trigger errors, uh, because the project is more focused on just the, the, the drawn output and less focused on, I guess, the, the, the amount of Revit model warnings that you're generating. And I'm just gonna take all the, all the smaller rooms that really can't afford this, um, this large room tag. Just swap those all out and maybe just nudge them up a little bit. And then from there, um, keep in mind some rooms might already have a value such as the stairs. So you may have to sort of keep the stairs at the same number regardless. Um, actually, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do the legend from two points, maybe. Mm, no, we'll do it from, we'll let them, we'll let them be the next number in sequence. Uh, just to avoid warnings, but we might show just how to split the legend by level so that you're not showing all the numbers on on the same floor plan when they're not relevant. I'm just finding all those rooms that have a slightly less room to accommodate a tag. I'll just do my bathroom as well. And swapping those out with this new tag and just populating the numbers as I go. Um, sometimes you might find your little circles maybe a little bit too small. We can see here that's getting a little bit pokey. Um, so you can always just come back to your tag family and quickly update this just to give it a bit more space. Let's go two and a half instead. And that should look just a little bit, a little bit better. Okay, so we've got the easy part done. That's the tagging. Now we need to schedule these rooms. So we're going to go to view schedules, schedules and quantities, down to rooms. So if you type on R, that'll take you straight down to the one starting with R. I'm going to make sure my phase is correct, which is new construction. And I'm just going to call my schedule uh, I'll call this G ground floor room numbers. And we're going to need a few things here. So the first thing we need is number. And the next thing we need is name. Um, now we could actually do things in a little bit of a different manner here. So I could actually create a combined field here if I want to actually put a, a dot after the number and then the name after it instead. Because in the case of the example that the user showed us, this is how the legend looked. Um, so instead I'm going to combine parameters. So I'm going to take number. I'm going to take name and I'm going to put, I'm going to make the separator between number dot space. And now we should end up with something that will concatenate these two fields. So if I OK this, we can see now when we have a number, we can see that we are getting that, that appearance. Now at the moment, some rooms don't have numbers, so we don't want them to show up in the legend. So we can filter and we do need to add the filtering field, in this case, number. So I'm going to add number. I'm going to go to appearance. Uh, sorry, formatting, and I'm going to just make this a hidden field so we can't see it, but we can still filter by it. I'm going to say that number has to be has to be greater than nothing. And that will just make it so that it has to at least have a number to show up. I can then go to um, sorting and grouping, and I can just sort by number. And now we can see we've got a little room legend. Uh, we may also wish to go to appearance and just make it look less like a schedule. So we'll turn off grid lines, we'll turn off the blank row before data and also the title and headers. And we'll just end up with a very simple looking schedule. Now if I go to my actual floor plan, say my ground floor plan, I can find the schedule. And there we go, we have a little, a little room numbers schedule that should remain up to date as the data in our model changes. Um, and it really does just, you know, give a nice little reference for the user saying, oh, okay, okay, I have, I'll get rid of that, but say, okay, I have one, what's one? Okay, one is, one is media. Um, you could also add more information because this is a schedule as well. So maybe you might wish to say, what are the areas of these as well? So we can go back to fields and just add area. We might also go to uh, formatting and just field format this so it does have its, its symbol and maybe to two decimal places. And then we can also show some areas of each of those rooms as well. So you can also create a slightly more um, useful schedule than maybe just room, room name, names and numbers. If you wish to filter by level, that's quite easy as well. Um, we would just have to add uh, the level. And then we also have to, in this case, uh, make a hidden field under formatting. And we can just filter that level equals ground floor. And now we just see the rooms that are relevant to that level. And we could obviously duplicate that schedule. And we could just do the same to make a, a one floor schedule. So we could say equals to level one. 
And that way you can break up the schedule across two sheets um, if you don't want to show irrelevant information between the two drawings. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, nice little trick and hopefully that helps you uh, more clearly document and communicate your projects to your clients. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, the presentation will be on GitHub as usual and I'll probably put the, uh, I'll put the room tag on there as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, and if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. I try to make videos two times a week and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.